Ellie. All right, let me make sure we are good to go. Awesome. Hope you guys are having a great night. It is something really weird is happening in the high desert right now. It is raining, so I was not expecting to uh, get ready for the live, and it'd be raining. All right, so the first one to comment always wins the first game. And let's see here tonight. The first one to comment is SB. What's going on, SB? This one's going out to you. These first set of tricks from the Magnalot is going to you. He's hyped. He's excited. Push it. Ass. Push it. Ass. All right, the next game is going out to, let's go with Purple Heart Emoji. Purple Heart Emoji is gonna win the first emoji game, the next shout out, and the next set of Magnus Tricks are going out just to you. Let's see if we have any questions in the chat. How do you train these dogs so well? I honestly kind of wondered that myself. I know that sounds kind of like a pat answer, but like it just seemed to happen and it just really feels like my destiny. All right, the winner is going to be Miss Azzy. Miss Azzy, this one's going out to you. We got the Magnet. Title. His name is Magnus. His nickname is the Magnat. And if you know his title, we are going to have him switch barking targets just for you. His name is Magnat. His nickname is Magnat. All right, let's see if anyone remembers it. If not, then we will give my mod the winner. All right. Can you train any breed like that? No, you cannot. Uh, you can train any breed, but to a high level, they really gotta have the genetics for it as well. It's just like how me personally, I could train night and day. I could have from childhood wanted to be a professional basketball player and it would never work out. It doesn't matter how hard I trained, I could have never been an NBA player. All right, let's see if anyone has his title. If not, then we're gonna give it to my motto. And we have it, Taryn Turner. Taryn Turner, this one's for you. We have two bark commands. One means bark at me, another means bark at the target. His name is Magnus, his nickname is Magna, but his title is the Modern Malinois. Insane amounts of drive, people friendly, he's what chick, but also, yeah, he's Magna. The next Magnus game is going to be Pride Flag Emoji. Pride Flag Emoji, if you don't know, I am super duper gay, so if you don't like gay people, you should definitely block my channel so we don't have to interact at all. What is the toughest command? I think the toughest command is actually different for every dog. Uh, for Magnus, the toughest command, you know, he really actually, in the beginning, struggled with coming into a sit when he was looking at the target. So let's do that. All right, the winner is gonna be Dada Bros. Dada Bros. This one's going out to you, Dada Bros. Cushion, ass, upo, cushion, ass, pop. And notice how he stayed fixated on the, the kibble. He wasn't looking up at me for, you know, what should I do? If I put his source, the thing that's really hyping him up, whether that be kibble, his ball, his sleeve, if I put that down in the ball and he's like glancing up at me, I've missed the boat with my dog training because that means I have made myself more important than what he's truly working for. And if that's the case, I'm never gonna have a dog who's really working hard. Cushion. Upo. Ass. Upo. Giblout. Cushion, upo, 
Peter Magna. He's just the Magna. Just the Magna. Does he like to cuddle with you or does he not like it? Actually, Magnus is my most cuddly dog. He would probably be okay with just cuddling all day long, uh, as long as he had a toy to chew on, because he loves to bite things. But no, he would sleep in bed with me every night. He would cuddle on the couch with me all day long if I let him. All right, the next game is gonna be four leaf clover emoji. Four leaf clover emoji, and we're gonna do the next set of Magna tricks just for you. All right, so do you recommend a different dog breed that is easy to train? I wouldn't recommend a Malinois, but uh, you know, honestly, if you've never had a dog before, I would go to a shelter and get an older dog without an aggressive history. Um, that can be a lot easier to train. You're not gonna have to worry about potty training a lot of times like you would a puppy. Um, and you can kind of see if, you know, having a dog is for you and they will be a lot slower of a speed. Plus, if you don't really have a purpose for sport or work, I always recommend getting a dog from a shelter and not just from a uh, breeder. All right, here we go. The winner is Noah. Noah is the winner. So let's do some work. Focus to her. Let's do some more stuff on the bowl. Just watch. So now he is following me, but he is looking at the bowl. So he is trying to stay with my leg. It means he can heal with me, but stay locked on that target until I tell him to look at me. Puss. Hopper. Puss. 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 He's used to switching. Puck. So there's a great example for you guys. He knows the difference between up and down, but I'm used to switching him so that you guys can see it and it's a little bit more uh, engaging. So let's just have him hold it this time. Because he was trying to anticipate. Puss. So I had my hand there just to kind of help him out there. I knew he was going to look down at it because that's what he's thinking. It's kind of like when we do the barking targets. If I'm always having him switch, when I bring him over to me, even if I tell him to bark at me, he sometimes wants to run to the bowl and bark because he's trying to get to that part that gets him his reward. Puss. And puss. We're just going to do a couple of these. This is something that we think about in training. If I notice that he's anticipating on something, then we're just going to cut out the thing he's anticipating to and give him the reward for doing the order part. Now each time we've done it, he has anticipated less and less because he's starting to get, oh. rather have a dog that anticipates on the food than on me. I think that's actually a good thing. I would rather have it that way than the other way around because it tells me that I haven't made, you know, me more important than what he's truly working for. So let's do another one of those. All right, did not anticipate, and I had my hand there just to ensure, because remember when we are training, we're setting him up for success. I'm not testing him, I'm not thinking, oh, you better not look at this food when I tell you not to. I've got a couple different ways that I can help set him up to make sure that if he wants to go back to the food, that I can help him out. A simple, simple one is just having my hand there to make sure that his head stays up. And he's Magna. All right, we got enough kibble to do one last Magnus game. The second, or the last Magnus game is going to be the number one emoji, it can't be the character, it has to be the emoji. The last shout out is going to you. Where do my dogs sleep? I alternate my dogs in my bed. Uh, so all my dogs sleep in the house, but they have their own crate because I don't trust them roaming around the house with each other, um, you know, without me being present. And so it's not that they would destroy the house. If they were the only one in the house, they'd be fine. But I don't trust them like sleeping in the same room together without me present. So I switch them out and uh, they each get their own turn in bed with me. And a lot of times though, if I'm just tired, all right, so the winner is gonna be uh, Andrew Sains. Uh, if I am tired, they're all just gonna sleep in their cream because I never sleep quite as well with the dog in the bed. So let's end this. Puppy style training, meaning we have food in our hand, we are always going back to the basics. You can see how he's almost as excited now as he was when we first 
started our training because that direct lure is here and what he wants is actually in sight. And so we like to end our training with something like this because it's fun for the dog and it allows us to get a little more quality training and not just quantity training. Now watch as he pivots. We have the butt down. So we come here. Oh, you may not be able to. I guess you can't quite see it. I messed up there. I should have been on this side. All right, let's do that one again. So you're going to see. Here we go. See how my hand is farther back. When we finish, when we finish the focus steel, when your hand is there, you want to make sure it feels almost uncomfortable, and that is how you know that they are going to be in a good position. All the way back there. Let's do it on the left, on the right side. Now we're going to finish again. All the way back here. Hey, Mike. One last one, we got just enough table for one more. Oh, that was my fault. All right, I'm getting sloppy too, so I need to quit. It's uh, not just at the end of the training that he gets sloppy, but, but me too sometimes. Oh yes. And always remember, if you can't do a call off like that, you can't stop them after you've activated them just on kibble. Got no hope of doing it on the sleeve or on a decoy. Hope you guys have a great night. Thanks so much for joining us on a live. He's like, but I'm Magna. He's like, but I'm Magna. Now notice the lick lipping, the ears back. These are appeasement signals. So what that means is, he doesn't want me to hold him right now, so we're going to put him down. If you want to have a great relationship with your dog, it's always a good idea to listen to those signals. You'll notice I can do anything I want to him. He may not enjoy it, but I don't want to make a habit of that because I want to keep our relationship good. So when he gives me those appeasement signals like lick lipping, lick lipping, lip licking, or putting the ears back and kind of like, hmm. I'm going to put him down and let him do his thing. Have a great night, guys. We will see you soon. Bye. Himanga.